out their scam. Jerry Philbrick called for violence. Was no secret what they planned. So I ask him who bombed Judy Berry. Who bombed Judy Berry by Daryl Cherney. And we'll be speaking with Daryl Cherney in a moment about a new documentary out about the environmentalist. I also want to thank today's students who have come to visit Democracy Now!, studying Introduction to Digital Media and Media and Cultural Analysis from NYU's Department of Media, Culture and Communication. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. Did a controversial anti-malaria drug known to induce psychotic behavior help cause the massacre of 17 Afghans? Afghan civilians by a U.S. soldier earlier this month. That's the question posed by a new expose in the Huffington Post. Reporter Mark Benjamins revealed the Pentagon recently launched an emergency review of mefloquine, also known as larium. The drug is used to protect soldiers from malaria, but has been known to have these side effects, including psychotic behavior, paranoia and hallucinations. It's been implicated in a number of suicides, homicides, including within U.S. military ranks. In 2009, the Army decreed soldiers who've suffered traumatic brain injury should not be given the drug. The Huffington Post reports the Pentagon initially ordered the review of mefloquin in January. But this month, just nine days after Staff Sergeant Robert Bales was detained for killing 17 Afghan civilians in a shooting rampage, the Army issued an emergency decree calling for the review to be expedited. The Pentagon says there's no connection between mefloquine and the murders, but it's refused to confirm or deny whether Bales was given the drug. Bales reportedly suffered traumatic brain injuries while serving in Iraq in 2010. Mark Benjamin is the reporter who broke the story for The Huffington Post. He's joining us from Washington. Mark, tell us what you found. Good morning, Amy. Well, what I found is that the Army is looking into some very troubling circumstances. Well, the military-wide is looking at some tro troubling circumstances. And what they're looking into is the military has discovered that in it, it seems to be violating its own rules. The, in 2009, the military announced that this drug called mefloquine is, in fact, very, very dangerous, which is what we I've been reporting on for, for many years and basically said, let's, let's only use this drug in very, very limited circumstances in places like Afghanistan, and let's definitely not give it to people who have any brain problems. Now, the reason why is because this is, this is a, a relatively unusual drug called a quinolone, and it goes into—it crosses the blood-brain barrier and goes into the human brain, and in certain brains can do very serious damage. <clears throat> so the military announced that this drug should not be given to people who have brain problems like traumatic brain injuries. What the military has discovered is that out on the battlefield, those rules aren't being followed. And some soldiers who do have these kinds of problems are getting this drug, and, and that obviously can increase the likelihood of a problem like a psychotic break. Now, this review just happens to be ongoing, apparently, at the time that Bales, the, the staff sergeant, went, apparently went on this, this shooting spree, killing 17 people, including nine children. Now, the Army is just, and the military will not say whether or not he took this drug, but this review is happening at the time that this, these murders took place. When you say that the soldiers um, ha uh, were taking it, w did they have to take it? Were they forced to take it? Yes. I mean, when you're out at an outpost, mostly mefloquine is not used by the military because of the dangers. But at some outposts, like, for example, relatively remote outposts in Afghanistan, like the one Bales was working at, he was at a, a relatively remote uh, outpost in Kandahar, uh, medics will sometimes resort to this drug because it's easy to prevent malaria. You only have to take this pill once a week. Other, uh, you know, pills that prevent malaria you have to take every day. So it's easy when you're in a, you know, rough and tumble outpost like that to just give your guys one pill a week and not have to worry about malaria. The, the concern is that at a place like that, they're not screening people for contraindications like, hey, did you have a head injury before? Because if so, you shouldn't take this pill. The concern is that out there in the bush, they just sort of hand this pill out and the people that shouldn't get it do get it. Now, whether or not Bales took this drug, we do not know. The Pentagon will not say. If he took the drug, could it have led to, the, to this kind of psychotic behavior? Definitely. It says that on the drug label, and we've seen it time and time again, even with very elite Special Forces soldiers who have taken this drug and gone on murderous rampages and suicidal rampages. Give us examples, Mark Benjamin. 
Well, I, I spent most of my time uh, working with Peace Corps volunteers who also took this drug and have had serious problems, and very elite Special Forces soldiers. The reason why I focused on Special Forces soldiers is that statistically they're very unlikely to do things like uh, commit suicide. Um, they're relatively stable people. I found a series of Special Forces soldiers who took this drug and then resorted to acts of violence, murder, and suicide. There was a, a typical pattern emerged. Um, I can give you one example. In 2004, I concentrated on a very experienced Special Forces soldier named Bill Howell at Fort Carson, Colorado. Howell took the, seemed to be a very, very stable guy, uh, took the drug during a tour in Iraq, um, had severe mental problems. And what's interesting, I think, is, is that typically, when a person has a problem with this drug, it's actually relatively easy to figure out because typically what happens is they don't just have mental problems, they have physical problems too. They have, they have a rash, they have gastrointestinal problems, they have often uh, vertigo, they're dizzy, they have eye problems, loss of some of their, their vision. So, you know, it's almost like someone's being poisoned. It's not, you know, it's not just that they're acting funny. That's what happened with Bill Howell. Um, he had a, a psychotic break, I think you would, you would describe it, uh, beat up his wife, hunted her around the house with a, almost like an animal uh, out into the yard and then uh, put the gun to her and then put the gun to his own head and, and, and shot himself in front of his wife, um, who described his, him as sort of just not being there, not, not being there. One of the things that concerns me is that some of these soldiers, when we have an opportunity to interview them, um, seem to really be not well connected. I mean, they sometimes talk gibberish. They some, they, I mean, it looks like brain damage, which is sort of what um, this attorney is describing. How, that's how Bales is behaving. Now, of course, that could have been caused by the battlefield trauma. It could have been caused by his brain injury. I just think it's important to pay attention to this story, because if it turns out that methylquin comes up, it is true that this could have been a factor if he took it. And in fact, it could have been a major factor. What about the drugs manufacturer? The drug has been manufactured by Roche Pharmaceuticals for several decades. What is interesting about this drug is it was actually initially in, uh, invented by the U.S. Army. Uh, the Army invented it after uh, a few years after Vietnam because malaria was such a problem in Vietnam. Um, the U.S. Army invented it, gave the patent to a manufacturer named Roche Pharmaceuticals. Uh, Roche Pharmaceuticals has, uh, for years, particularly over the last decade when I've been reporting on the drug, resisted, I think it's fair to say, um, putting increasing warnings on its drug label. It, it has done so reluctantly under pressure from the FDA. Uh, the current uh, label for Larium, which is the brand name, Mefloquine is the generic name, does uh, list things like psychotic episodes, um, hallucinations, anxiety, that kind of thing. The other thing that's interesting about the drug label that Roche uh, puts out is that it, it, it says on the drug label an interesting thing about Larium. I mentioned how it crosses the blood-brain blood barrier. Sometimes people, or actually frequently when people have a problem with this drug, the percentage that do, once the damage is done in the brain, it's, it's done. In other words, it's not like you can just wait until this drug gets out of your system and then you're okay. Typically, once the damage is done to your, to your, your brain and your, and your central nervous system, it's done. It's like being hit in the head with a hammer. And it says that on the drug label. Um, it says that sometimes it doesn't matter whether you stop taking the pills. If you have problems, they last, quote, long after, unquote, uh, people stop taking the drug. So it's, it, I think it's safe to say that it, it, in some situations, can be a very dangerous pill. Looking at a report from CBS News, you're talking about the soldier at Fort Bragg. Four soldiers accused of killing their wives. Two of them committed suicide. The other two await trial. So many brutal crimes, so similar, so close in time, raised questions. The Army sent a team to investigate all taking larium. Do you think that, could, that is possible? Uh, yes, I do. In fact, it, that was a separate case that I also spent a lot of time at, on the ground at Fort Bragg investigating that case. Um, those soldiers did take larium. Uh, they did exhibit some very strange behavior and some of the physical problems. One of the soldiers, uh, named Bill Wright, interestingly, uh, did kill his wife and then killed himself in jail later. Um, we did have a chance to talk with his attorney quite a bit, and he, again, exhibited some of these same problems. In fact, he, you know, a, a very elite soldier had trouble putting together sentences 
sentences while in prison. You know, he couldn't couldn't talk right. This was interestingly a civil affairs soldier who was not exposed to combat. He was, you know, digging wells and that kind of stuff very early in the war in Afghanistan. So, you know, the only thing that we could find that would cause him to basically have a psychotic break was this pill. And he took the pill and had a psychotic break and killed his wife and, and ultimately killed himself. Now soldiers who are suffering the side effects of larium have uh, are seeking compensation. That's right. The, the, there, are, there are a variety of, of, of veterans and veterans groups that are concerned about the long-term implications of this drug. I mean, for example, there's you know veterans against larium on Facebook. There's, and it's interesting how how uh, motivated some p parts of the veterans community are about this drug. And you know, one other thing I would note: whenever I write a story, I haven't written about mefloquine for years. I'd, I'd sort of given up um, until this event took place. And when you write a story like I did uh, in Huffington Post yesterday, boy, the email, I mean, it just pours in from veterans, also Peace Corps volunteers, uh, mm -hmm. but veterans saying that they have had some really troubling experiences with this drug. I don't have time to vet all those stories, but, boy, if my inbox is any indication, uh, there are a lot of Mark, soldiers Mark, what if you refuse there. to take it? What if you're a soldier and you're just not going to let them and, uh, give it to you? You're not going to take it? Well, there, there are there are cases where that occurs. Mostly, what I have heard happens is soldiers realize there's a problem with this drug and they take it from the medic and they tell the medic that they are taking it. and They throw it over their shoulder. Um, I, I'm not aware of any case where anybody has said to a medic, "I'm not going to swallow this pill." They just quietly don't do it. Um, so, you know, I, I would say uh, hypothetically, disobeying a, a direct order in the military is a really bad idea and can get you into big, big trouble and get you thrown in jail. So it's not like anybody has any choice about these things. And the Pentagon's but response. I, to your article, Mark? The Pentagon response has been that, you know, this review, we're looking into this drug. Yes, there is a problem out there on the battlefield. Yes, it seems that this drug is going to some of the wrong people, people like Bales, who should not be given the drug. But it has nothing to do with the Bales events. They say it's completely unrelated, and it, and it may be. Um, and then they say, but we're not going to talk about Bales and whether or not he took the pills. And I, I think that that's a situation that probably will not stand. I think one way or another, the, the Pentagon is going to be, have to come out and say, either this guy took the drug or he did not. And if he did not, you know, I, I'm done. <laughs> I'm not going to write about it anymore. But I, I think it is, it, it is a pertinent question that needs to be answered. Is the military or other groups giving out larium to communities, for example, in Afghanistan, in Iraq? I'm not aware of it being handed to civilians, uh, you know, for example, in Afghanistan and Iraq, but there are other government entities that have used it for years. One example that I think I mentioned was the Peace Corps. It's easy to find Peace Corps volunteers who say they've, uh, you know, had real problems with this drug. It's very easy to find Peace Corps volunteers who said they started having problems with the drug and just didn't take it. They'd rather just get malaria or risk getting malaria. Um, there are State Department officials that I've run into who have been stationed around the world who have claimed claim to have serious brain damage from taking the drug. So there, it's mostly, you know, federal government officials. That this, is a, this is a drug that the federal government had invented, and the government has been handing out to government officials for a long, long time. Mark Benjamin will link to your article, an investigative reporter who just broke this story in the Huffington Post called Military Scrambles to Limit Malaria Drug Just After Afghanistan Massacre. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, the War and Peace Report.